To begin assembly of your filler winder, we we'll start with the uh, laser cut pack and the hardware pack. And uh, pull out all the laser cut pieces. And uh, begin pulling off the masking tape. And uh, open up the hardware and uh, sort out the nuts and bolts. We we'll start with the motor mount and the gear motor. Put the gear motor through the motor mount with the uh, thicker part facing the top and turn it until you can see two screw holes through the slots. And we'll take two 10 millimeter M3 screws and just get them started into that mounting hole on the motor. Just tighten that down a bit and rotate the motor if you need to until you see the other hole line up inside the other slot and put in the other 10 millimeter screw. And get it just tight enough that they hold, but you can, but you still want to be able to slide the motor up and down in the slots. And get the printed drive gear and slide a hex nut into the uh, the slot at the end of the gear. But you might have to trim it out a little bit with a knife to to get it in there, but it should fit. And take the third 10 millimeter M3 screw and put it in just enough to catch it on the threads. Slide the drive gear onto the motor shaft so that the set screw lines up with the flat of the shaft. And then tighten that down the rest of the way. This might take a little bit of adjustment later. You don't need to tighten it down completely tight. Take the control board and four of the 12 millimeter screws and mount it into the holes near the bottom of the, of the board. And make sure that the hall sensor, which is a little black square, is facing the motor. Take the threaded rod two of the M8 nuts and the M8 washers. First put on one of the nuts. One of the washers. And put it through the hole above the electronics. And then add the other nut and washer to the other side. At this point you need to decide which way you want the winder to face. You can set it this way and have the filament come in from right to left. Or you can turn the base over and have the filament come in from left to right. My preference is to come right to left. So just slot the mounting the motor mount into the back of it the base mount, which will be a little bit of a tight fit. It's tight enough fit that it's pretty secure by itself, but we'll just lock it in with one of the square nuts and a 25 millimeter bolt. We'll just push the square nut up into the slot and run that, run the screw up until it engages the nut. And tighten it down just a little bit. You don't want to risk cracking the wood, so just get a firm fit. Next is the printed uh, spool gear. And we'll just put the six weight bearings onto the front and into the back. The magnet goes into the hole at the bottom of the gear, but it needs to be oriented in the correct direction. So give it a few little flicks and get to spin around freely so it settles in the direction it wants to settle in. And the face of the magnet that points north is the face that needs to match the face of the gear. And it's helpful sometimes to color that with a marker just so you don't lose track as you're as you're putting it in. Slide the spool gear onto the rod. And lift the motor up to let it in.
Once the gears are lined up, you can tighten down the uh, motor to hold it tight. Make any necessary adjustments to the position of the, uh, the drive gear if needed. And then tighten down the set screw. Next is a spool support. You'll need two 16 millimeter screws and one 25. Use the 16s to mount the base of the support into the slot with the curved part here facing the outside edge. Next, use the 25 millimeter screw to put in the support arm, making sure that the corner faces back toward the motor. The curved part faces the edge of the base. Next, get the uh, laser cut servo mount. Put the servo in from one side with the wire facing down. And then use four M12 screws to mount it on. You don't actually have to use four screws, that's kind of overkill, but two is plenty. If you do one and one diagonal, or if you're complete, so you can go for all four. Mount the uh, servo mount into the slots. Um, start with the slots closest to the spool for now, and then um, later you can make adjustments if you feel like you need to change how close it is to the spool. And you can lock that in with the square nut and a 25 millimeter screw, just like uh, we did with the motor mount. Take the cross-shaped horns that came with the servo and uh, use the sharp screws that came with the servo and a small screwdriver and put them through the slots and through the holes of the horns. And when that's done, place the servo horns onto the hub of the servo and secure it with the short screw that came in the uh, servo pack. Before you screw it down, just turn it and find where the ends of the servo are. And try and set it on there so that you know it's all the way at the end of the servo's range of movement on one side. Now for handling small screws in tight places like this, tweezers really make the job a lot easier. Easier, not necessarily easy.